campus. Hello, photographers. I'm here with my friend Andrew. I've got the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. He's got the Nikon D750. And uh, this is gonna be a little bit of a first impressions video on my thoughts on the EM1 Mark II and a little bit of a shootout with the D D750 and the EM1 Mark II. Because right now, right now, <laughs> and this is kind of funny and this is why people are talking about this camera so much, the EM1 Mark II body sells for $2,000. The D750 body sells for $1,796 right now. So you can actually get a full frame Nikon D750 body for cheaper than a Micro Four Thirds EM1 Mark II. And some people are kind of up in arms about that. So before we start shooting, just a couple of first thoughts on the EM1 Mark II. Considering this as a camera all by itself, uh, I think it's great. I've been shooting with this for a couple of weeks now, been doing some low light testing, and I haven't done super hard pixel peeping on it, but everything looked really nice. The focus has been fo performing really fantastically, which is one of the things Olympus really worked on on this camera. And the burst modes that you get out of this, I mean, they're insane, which is mainly the reason this thing costs $2,000. So my first impressions are that, despite everybody crying about this being a $2,000 Micro Four Thirds camera, I think it's worth the $2,000. But that's just talking about the features. Let's see what the image quality looks like. So we were just walking here in Wisconsin Rapids and we've got these murals up around town. So Andrew and I are gonna take a couple of shots. One of the interesting things that I'm noticing is how sensitive this trigger, this shutter button is. Like there'll be times where I'm pressing the button to just to get a half focus or to wake up the camera and it's actually firing off a shot without me even realizing it. So that you could consider a good or a bad thing. On the good hand, it's super responsive, but on the bad hand, you could be taking pictures when you're trying to focus and things could be out of focus or just totally off. We were walking here and Andrew was just sharing some thoughts about the pricing on this with me. So I wanted him to share his thoughts with you because I am, I'm, I'm in agreement with this and this is part of the reason why I think people need to calm down about the pricing here. I think what we're seeing is we're seeing an emergence of new cameras that started with, I think it was the A99 II and the Nikon D500 with cameras that just have this insane burst speed and they can honestly be used as a true professional's camera for sports photography. And prior to this, the only options that you had were really a 1D or a Nikon D4 S D5. And you're looking at a $6,000 price point as your barrier to entry with a D500, a, uh, sorry, A99 II, and now with this new Olympus, you are looking at a much cheaper price point to get into that entry. And that's a much fair comparison, uh, is that now you can take a much more consumer's camera and be able to accomplish something with that a much lower price point than before. If I weren't shooting the MMA stuff that I shoot, I probably I wouldn't be interested in this camera in, as far as owning it as much as I am because of that. Because while I'm doing fine with the EM5 Mark II, that camera was clearly not designed to shoot sports. And, and I, I lose shots because of that. And so seeing this, I'm thinking $2,000, that's exactly what my thoughts were. Yeah, yeah. Now I don't have to think about buying something like, you know, a D5 or a Canon, which I wouldn't do because I'm not in those systems anymore anyway. I mean, I think it's fair to say that this is really the first true Micro Four Thirds sports camera, you know? Yeah. All right, so we're heading down by the water here and we were just discussing doing a Boca challenge. And before I do it, before we do it, we can tell you right away the book is going to be different because though the field of view is basically the same with the lens that I'm shooting and the lens that Andrew is shooting, this is actually 12 to 40 millimeters and his is actually 24 to 70 millimeters. But we want to show you that difference so that you can see the difference in this. This is a bit treacherous, but we're going to go down these stairs here and hopefully I don't fall as I'm walking. It's pretty icy down here. So I'm walking, I'm holding two cameras, hoping not to die here. Yeah, I'm holding all this. So we decided we're gonna do a Boca challenge with Mr. Snowman here. Zoomed all the way up to 40 millimeters. 
the EM1 Mark II does a fantastic job with colors, with the exposure, details, and all those sorts of things, right on par with the D750. You see a slightly different color shift with the D750, but that's the way you go from camera to camera and sensor to sensor sometimes. Now, when you're looking at the bokeh, the bokeh between the two of them is virtually identical. After the bokeh challenge, we turned around to grab a wide-angle landscape shot, and when you look at these two shots again, the details are really fantastic. They're basically on par. The Olympus does render the colors a little bit richer right out of the camera with no adjustments in Lightroom. And when you zoom into 100%, you can see details are pretty much identical. It's really stacking up quite nicely against the D750. Now, as we're walking towards the stairs, and I hopefully don't fall and break this camera, or myself, one of the other things I wanted to, to discuss, back to the sports that we were talking about, is the Pro Capture feature on here. Now, if you're not familiar with how it works, essentially, you, you turn this Pro Capture on, which engages the electronic shutter, so you're not using the mechanical shutter, and when you press the shutter button halfway down to achieve focus, it starts buffering photos before you actually press the shutter button. And you can save up to the 15 shots before you actually press the shutter button, which can be key in capturing critical moments in sports and other action that you're trying to anticipate, but your shutter finger might be too slow to actually capture. And that's phenomenal. That's a game changer. That's a game, that's a game changer. changer, yeah. And that's something you can't do with a mechanical shutter. Now you could do this on a DSLR with live view, so Nikon could implement something like this. It's not exclusive to mirrorless, but with Nikon you'd have to hold your camera out like this, or Canon or whatever DSLR, versus using the viewfinder. Sony could pull it off, I think, with the SLTs, because they got that translucent mirror, but they would have to disengage the mechanical shutter to achieve the same True. thing. The other thing to add is that the application for that would not just be for sports. I mean, very often when we shoot a wedding, there's something, a split second moment that happens on the other side of the room. You pull up and by the time you've grabbed focus, even if you're a pro, that moment is gone. And yeah. So that is a game changer. That it, you can get shots. It really is. So again, you know, these are the kind of things you have to consider when you're thinking about, is a camera like this, a micro four thirds camera like this worth $2,000? People tend to get hung up on the sensor size. And we're not saying the sensor size isn't important. Clearly it has importance, but that's not the only thing you should consider when you're thinking about cameras like the EM5 Mark II or the D750 or something else. One of the other, I don't know if I'd call it a game changer, I'd like to know what you think about this, Andrew, but um, one of the other things that is not exclusive to this camera, but is a new addition to cameras featuring touchscreen LCDs, is the ability while you're using the electronic viewfinder to just run your thumb over the back LCD screen to change the focus point. You don't have to push any buttons, you don't have to open any menus, you just put your thumb on the back screen and you start moving it around. Well I think honestly you're gonna have to see cameras have that feature. Let's just be honest, it's inexcusable to not be putting touch screens this day and age on a two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollar camera. Yeah, yeah, the manufacturers are definitely holding back on some spots. Now one of the particular problems that I discovered with the EM5 Mark, or EM1 Mark II is that the nose rejection isn't great. So I have to consciously hold the camera and put my eye up so that the tip of my nose isn't resting on the back LCD. Otherwise, it activates the focus point selection thinking it's a thumb. We're heading back down by where we're parked. We're going to grab some interior shots, do a little bit of an ISO test, compare these two cameras. Now when it comes to the noise, again, things are looking shockingly good when you're comparing a micro four thirds sensor to a full frame sensor. When you zoom in to 300%, you can certainly see a difference between the noise qualities of the D750, which is better, but the Olympus is fantastic at ISO 6400. We're trying to get on the roof of the building. Whoa. Right, right. So just up the stairs. There we go. This is a pretty nice spot. 
again, I'm really enjoying the quality that the EM1 Mark II is giving. Uh, the color rendition is really fantastic. The details when you zoom in are, this is a 300% zoom, which is really just fantastic what you're seeing there. Certainly you're not reading the letters off of the wall there, but when you zoom in on the street signs, you can see perfect clarity and detail on there. It's just really knocking it out of the park. Let's do, let's do. Now, we were talking before about the, the sports application. Well, just for grins, let's do it. Uh, let's switch back, because I don't want to mess with your settings, okay. but if you want to throw it into burst mode, Let's do just do a quick burst comparison so people can hear the difference right. of these shutters banging away. Here we go. This is going to take this full to buffer. Here we go. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty crazy, right? <laughs> Perfect. So that's one of the differences we're talking about. That doesn't make the D750 a bad camera by any stretch of the imagination. It's a widely regarded, fantastic camera. But for a sports application... Yeah, I think this is clearly the winner. Right, right, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and you were shooting it with a little bit. What did you think? Uh, very clear EVF. Um, some, some of the other EVFs you use, I see, at least my eyes, I think I see like it almost have a color cast to them. Mm -hmm. I think I like the Olympus as a much cleaner looking EVF, very, very easy to use. I prefer EVFs over <laughs> optical, so it's preaching to the choir. We're going to be adding an EVF to my collection here soon. But. Right. This about wraps it up. I just want to share a couple of last thoughts on this. And in short, my first impressions are that this is definitely worth every penny of the $2,000 that they're asking for it. Um, I think it's a really fantastic camera. It's a high probability that I'm going to buy one of these. So. Andrew, I want to thank you for hanging out with me. Yeah, absolutely. For letting us shoot out the D750 versus the EM1 Mark II. If you have any questions about the Olympus, the D750, or photography in general, let me know down in the comments. And then do me a favor, would you like this video and subscribe to my channel? If you really like this video, please share it with your friends, especially the mirrorless loving friends. Hell, anybody. But the most important thing that you need to do is exactly what Andrew and I are doing today, which is just get out there and take some damn photos. I'll see <laughs> you guys, I don't know, sometime. Yeah, I'm holding all this, so... And it doesn't help. Much smaller feet than you. Yeah, and it doesn't help that at home, I was walking down my the stairs and I slipped and fell on my. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Now I get loads of questions and they all boil down to one thing, which is how do I make my camera do what I want it to do? And here's the thing: your camera is like an instrument, and you can't make music if you can't play your instrument. If you want to learn how to play your camera like the instrument it is, visit this link right here to check out my guide to shooting in manual mode video course.